praise you and we give you glory and honor. Lord, we, as we gather together in this place, Lord, you see each and every person that showed up and you see what they had to go through in order to get here. The young people, Lord, that have offered to give their time, Brother John, Lord, and the, and the music group that's going to sing, he, even the young man Jacques that's about to come up. Lord, I pray a special blessing over all of these young people and over the people that are going to use their gifts tonight, Lord. I pray a special blessing over each and every person that was willing to show up. Lord, like one lady told me before we got started, I believe her name was Becky. She said, if the world can go out there and go to the Mardi Gras parade, yeah, come on, somebody, and what are the forms that the world has to offer? It's a good thing when the children of God show up into the house of the Lord, amen, and hear a word from Him. Praise God. So, Lord, we ask you to bless us. And Lord, we ask you to bless this night. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, give a warm Galliano Golden Medal for John the Man.
not to come here to, to, to put on a fancy concert, not to come here to, to tickle your ears or to give you some psychology or philosophy of man, but to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Nothing more, nothing less under the power of the anointing of His Holy Spirit. And I thank God that, that you know, even though it's raining, you know, don't, don't worry about who's here and who's not here. There's a need in your heart that Jesus Christ, He's here tonight to meet that need in your heart and in your life. And if you could just stand with me, we're going to take up an offering here. If the others, if you could uh, take up your buckets and uh, we're just going to pray. We're going to ask God to, to have His way in His service. And, you know, the Bible says what the devil meant for evil. God meant it for good. And there may be a storm raging on the outside. But let me tell you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, He's ruling on the inside. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father God, we just come before you, Lord. In the mighty and wonderful name of your Son, Jesus, Lord God. Lord, I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your mercy, Lord. God, we just ask you, Lord, that you'll have your way in this service, Lord God. Lord, that you'll meet every need in every one of our hearts tonight, God. Lord, that you'll anoint our minister as he speaks your word, God. Give him the anointing, the unction of your spirit, God. Lord, give us ears to hear, Lord God. Bless each and every gift, Lord God. Bless the giver, Lord God. And multiply it to them a hundredfold, Lord God. And Lord, we ask it all in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen and amen.
you know? I was thinking, and it, it's so easy to worship to these words that are already written. Because it's not your words. It's somebody else. It's somebody else wrote the song. So we're going to go back and do that. We're not going to sing. We're just going to play. And I want you guys to tell Jesus how much he means to you. Because you know somebody else's words. I want, he wants to hear from you. Tell him how much you love him.
Christ, it's the blood of Jesus. It doesn't matter what you're facing, it doesn't matter what you're going through, your answer. It's found in what Christ has done for you at Calvary's cross. Peter said we haven't been bought with corrupt things such as silver and gold. But we've been purchased, we've been redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb tonight. That's your answer tonight. It's the blood of Jesus. I want to say that just one more time. What do you want to wear on Just worship Him. Tonight I have sensed, I have felt the presence of God from the time that we were setting up to the time we were singing. And even now I sense the presence of the Lord in this place. And uh, I want you to know if you come with a hungry heart tonight, I believe the Lord's going to fill you. The Lord's going to do what He desires to do in your heart and in your life. And uh, first and foremost, we just want to thank each and every one of you for coming out tonight. And uh, it's, it's such a blessing. Like, like Matt said at the beginning, despite the weather, despite all this nonsense that's going on. We, uh, we thank God for what He's doing. Amen. And we thank God for each and every one of you who made it a point to uh, come out here tonight and uh, hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Amen. And uh, we just, I want to recognize, where's John? Yeah, everybody knows John. If you don't know John, that's him back there in the blue shirt. And, uh, I tell you what, John has, John has played such a tremendous part in my heart and in my life in the past three, three and a half years. And, uh, John, he's, he's, he kind of likes to stay behind the scenes, but um, it, it, it was John that the Lord laid this upon John's heart to, uh, to have these meetings and to come out and share the gospel with our community and uh, those who would love to hear. And um, I just appreciate John and everything that he's done, the work that he's put into this thing. He's been working his, his tail off, you know, and you don't see him much, but uh, I can tell you he's working for the Lord, and I believe the Lord's going to bless him for that. Amen. And uh, we just love John, and uh, we appreciate John. But we have tonight, uh, we have the privilege tonight, the distinct honor, I feel, uh, to introduce a good friend of mine. I, I was actually introduced to Matt through, uh, through John. And uh, Matt has, as well, has, uh, even though the, the short amount of time that we've known each other, he's played an integral part in, in my heart and in my life. And I, I look up to Matt, I, I really do. He's, uh, the Lord uses him in a great and mighty way. And uh, without further ado, let's give it up for Brother Matt Abair. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, I hope I can live up to the, to the accolades. Amen. I, uh, I want to I give a special thanks to uh, Christian Family Center and Pastor Mo for all, the, you know, for them the, being so hospitable. And, and helping John and, and all of the people in the church, the ladies in the church that helped out. If, uh, if you helped, you know who I'm talking about. Amen. 
And uh, it was all part of the process of making this take place. And um, so once again, we want to just thank everybody for coming out. I don't want to spend too much time in preliminaries. I believe the Lord has given me a word to speak for this church tonight. But I do want to let everybody know that I wrote a book. And I have some books for sale. Amen. Typically they go for $15, but for some reason I feel like I want to sell them for $10 tonight. Amen. Hey, I don't know if anybody likes to read. Does anybody like to read fiction type of stuff that's very biblically based? Amen. And uh, I don't know if, I know some of the young people have definitely heard of some of this going on. And maybe some of you have also heard of this concept or this word that they're using nowadays called the Illuminati. Anyway, it's very prominent in the music industry. I mean, did anybody watch the Academy Awards? I mean, I'm not going to raise my hand. I didn't watch them. But, you know, nevertheless, I did watch some stuff on YouTube that went down on there. Katy Perry's thing that she did and all the demons that were dancing around her and, and, and the demon spirit, you know, and baffling that and all these things. You probably don't even know what that means. Uh, and it's a good thing if you don't. But I want you to know that, that the occult is, is also alive and well in the world today. The Word of God tells us that there is a spirit of Antichrist. And in the spirit of Antichrist has been causing deception in the body of Christ for thousands of years. And this thing didn't just show up yesterday. But I want you to know that, that God and through the Word of God and what God has planned, and we're going to talk about that tonight, that you and I can have victory. Amen? But the Lord put it on my heart. He began to show me some things that became very disturbing to me. And I wrote this book, and, and I just want to offer to give it to somebody tonight, anybody that likes to read fiction books, I just want to give one of these out. She's sister right here, we'll take it. And uh, once again, if anybody feels led to, uh, I've heard some good things about the book. Now, most of the people that have read it are my friends, and, and people that don't want to necessarily hurt my feelings. But then again, I have heard from some men that I know don't lie, and uh, they have they've told me that they enjoyed the book and that the book was enlightening to them. And so I hope you'll get a, a copy and, and you'll check it out for yourself. To be honest with you, I just want to take a little bit of time in prayer, amen, for just yeah. a second. Father, we just thank you and praise you, Lord God. We give you glory and honor. Holy Spirit, we thank you for your presence in this place. And Lord, I just pray that you would begin to give us ears to hear even now as we pray, oh Lord God. You said he who has ears to hear, let him hear. You weren't talking about the fact that people hearing faculty, Lord, that their auditory senses weren't working. Instead, you were talking about the fact that sometimes people are unwilling to hearken or to submit to the word of the living God. And so I pray, Lord, that you would give us ears that would hear, Lord. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would allow our spiritual eyes to see. Paul told us in the book of Ephesians that his prayer for Ephesus was that the eyes of their understanding would be enlightened. Lord, we know that our understanding doesn't have eyes. Paul is praying that we would be able to see spiritually, that we would be able to discern. And so I pray that prayer for us tonight, Lord. I pray, Lord, for the heart. I pray for the soil of our heart, Lord God, that you would begin even now to break up the fallow ground, Lord, that it would be ready to receive the precious seed of the gospel, Lord. Lord, that the seed of the gospel would take root in our hearts, Lord, that it, that it would begin to take root and that it would bear fruit in our lives. Lord, we pray for the manifestation of the Holy Spirit, Lord God, in our lives, Lord, the fruit of the Spirit. That it would be brought forth in our lives, oh Lord God. That like John even prayed up here, Lord, that you would fill us up so that we would be willing to hear the hurting out there in the world, Lord. That we would be willing to be used as vessels for you. I pray, oh Lord, that you would do a work in our lives tonight. Maybe even most of the people in this room are already believers. I know that they probably already love Jesus if they showed up in this place. And so, Lord, I pray that you would do a work in our hearts, Lord. I pray that you would cause the fire, Lord, of your spirit to burn with fervor on the inside of us, Lord. I pray that you would awaken us, Lord, from a slumber. Paul warned us that the church would fall asleep. Lord, I pray that you would awaken your people from a slumber, Lord, and that we would see the gravity, the severity. Of the situation at hand, Lord. We hear the preacher say, we're at the end. But there seems to be no urgency from behind the pulpit. Lord, there's no urgency from behind the pulpit. At least not the men that we watch, Lord God, on television. 
at least the majority of them. Lord, I pray that you would cause a, a fire to burn in our bellies, Lord. And that when we come to the realization that we are in a war, Lord, make us soldiers. Prepare us for battle, O Lord God. As you begin to bring evil to an end, we give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, I just want to take a little bit of a moment and share real briefly my testimony. I, sometimes I do preach for a long time and I'm going to be mindful of your time tonight. But I, I don't know about you, but I like to know a little bit about the person that's talking to me. Amen. And so I just want to take just a moment and share a little bit of my testimony with you. I, I grew up in a home where my father drank a lot. Now, many of you can already relate to that. My dad, you know, I'm proud of, of, of my dad. Uh, I, I, I believe with all my heart that my father gave his life to the Lord at the end of the, towards the end of his life. Uh, as a matter of fact, I want to give a shout out my pastors here, Pastor Brad Bullock. And I can distinctly remember one time when Pastor Brad was preaching a message. It was on Resurrection Sunday. And I can remember my father lifting his hand whenever Pastor Brad said, does anybody want to give their heart to Jesus? And that wasn't the only time, but that was one distinct time that I remember my God lifting his hand. And you know, my father lifting his hand in, in response to the gospel of Jesus Christ. Now some people would say, well, just lifting your hand, I get all that. But it shows me that there's something there. It shows me that there's a desire, amen? But my father was a, kind of a rough fella. He, he played college football. He's in the Hall of Fame at UL for football. He, he was a Marine in the Korean War. He drank a lot and he was mean. And, and I grew up in a home like that. And, and you know, we learn after our father. And, you know, the truth of the matter is I get many opportunities. I go to the jail at least twice a month. And, and I explain to these guys in the jail and I tell them, listen, I understand that you've had a rough life. I've had a rough life too. I'm not here to get in a spit match with you. I get it. There's, but listen, we live in the midst of chaos. We live upon a fallen earth. And that we all come, we all have a context of pain from which to draw. And just as you have and just as I had, I had a context of pain from which to draw. And you know what? I learned some bad things through the, through the years. And, and before you know it, my life, I was in bondage. I was in bondage to alcohol. I was in bondage to drugs. By the time I was 19, I was in my third rehab. I stole my dad's car when I was 15 with two other yahoos, and we ran away to California. My dad would laugh about that all the time. He would say, afterwards, he'd say, yeah, he thought he was going to the land of milk and honey. You know, and I got into even more trouble while I was over there. When I tried to think back to that young boy that was 15 years old, I'm 48 now. And when I think back to the fact that my sister gave her heart to Jesus when I was 13 years old. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? An invasion in your life? When somebody shows up in the midst of your life and they're completely different than what they ever were before. See, previously my sister was a pot smoker. And then all of a sudden she shows up in the midst of our home and she's throwing the name Jesus out all over the place. And I didn't know what in the world was going on. What's happened to her? And I knew it was real. I knew it was real, but at the same time, I rejected. I rejected that gospel message. And my life spiraled down. Spiraled down. Until finally, I had gotten to a place where there seemed to be no more hope. I was no longer allowed to live in my home. My mom said, son, I love you so much, but you have to go. I was a high school dropout at the, at, in the 10th grade. I tell people that because, see, now God has, has blessed me, and, and I have two master's degrees now. And sometimes people get the wrong impression when I say that, as though I'm trying to toot a horn or something. It's nothing about that. I'm trying to give you testimony about the life-changing power of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. He gave me the opportunity to go to school and I, got, I ended up with a master's in nursing and I, and I have a master's in, in Bible theology now. And you know what? I'd like to go back to school and get even more if the Lord permits. But I'm going to tell you something. God radically moved in and changed my life that night when my sister invited me to that church service on a Sunday night. Amen. And there I sat in the crowd just as you are. And it was a woman preacher. I don't know what you think about a woman preacher. I'll be honest with you. But this woman was preaching the fire of God. And she kept talking about the blood. Just like the song says. She kept talking. 
talking about the blood of Jesus. Yeah. And I'm going to be honest with you. It was very uncomfortable in the air. I was very uncomfortable. I'd never heard anybody talk about the blood. I go, oh, listen, I had gone to church. I had gone to church many times. Matter of fact, they kicked me out of catechism. And that's just the truth. Now, the nice, the nice priest tried to call me back. I said, Mom, it's just, that was thir I was 13 then. I said, Mom, it's just really, it's useless for me to go back. I'm just causing them people trouble. But you know, she kept talking about the blood that night. And it's so uncomfortable, but then she finally said something. She said, the Holy Spirit is dealing with somebody in this place. And when she said that, all of a sudden, my heart started beating. And you gotta understand, I was something, boy. Look, I had hair down my back. I thought I was David Lee Roth. <laughs> Good thing I couldn't say, boy. I was something, man. I was a man. I was so full of pride, and I didn't have any reason to be prideful. If you understand what I'm saying, I had rags on my back when I showed up my sister's house. So full of pride. But that night, I walked up to that office, and I bowed my knee. And I said, Lord, I don't even know what this means. But I know one thing, I know I'm a sinner. And I pray that you would change me. And you know, that night, God changed me. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But I have to also tell you another part of my testimony. Because you see, God radically changed me that night. And from that day forward, I was determined in my heart that I was going to serve God the best that I could. And that night, that lady preached on the blood. And God knows that she spent her whole life in ministry. And she told me, you know what, maybe a week later that I was a new creation in Christ. But I'm going to also tell you this. That the way that I was supposed to live for God, that what I was taught from that day moving forward was not still to go back to the foot of the cross. It was not to trust in the finished work of Christ. But instead, it was a theology built upon a system of works. It was a theology built upon a system of Matt's performance and what he was going to do and how much Bible he was going to read and how much he was going to go to church and how much he was going to fast because those were the things that he was going to have to do in order for him to walk in victory. And I'm here to tell you that it led to frustration. It led to frustration and it led to failure. And the very thing I promised God that I would never do, I found myself doing again. Come on, somebody. I know we got some children of God in the house tonight that have experienced failure even as a believer. And I don't know about you, but I was so broken after 12 years of Christianity. Yes. So broken. So bound again. Can I be honest with you tonight? I was bound. Yes, like a slave. Amen. Bound like a slave to yes. what? Married, master's degree in nursing, bound like a slave to lust. Looking, putting my eyes upon things I had no business putting my eyes upon. Yes. Thinking things I had no business thinking. Had become a slave. And you know, tragedy struck my life. I'm not going to go into details, but I want you to know tragedy struck my life. A family member died tragic. In the midst of that broken, I cried out to God. I cried out to God from a broken heart. I can remember that night very clearly. It happened in one, Like a whimpering child curled up in the fetal position in my bed, I cried out to God. I'm not ashamed to tell you. I cried out to God from a broken heart and I said, look at me, Lord. Look at me. Look at what a mess I am. I call myself a Christian and I can't even love my own flesh and blood. Lord, how will I ever love someone on the street that doesn't smell right or doesn't look right or doesn't do things the way that I think they should do it? God, you have to do a work in me. You have to do a, something on the inside of me to make things right. And I have to tell you that it happened a couple of months later. I hadn't been in a bar room in 12 years. But I just assumed been because I was drinking beer in the back door. See, I'm going to be honest with you tonight. I'm not going to hold back. I'm not going to try to shroud anything or hide it or obscure it. People need to know the Lord told me, share your story with my people. Because you're not the only one that was walking in bondage, son. And when all the dust settled, the Lord showed up while I was in that barroom that night. He showed up while I was in the stall. Two guys in the latrine. You know, I still think about that. I know I'm taking more time than I should, but just bear with me. 
that I can even still remember the smell of that place. And how much it broke my heart weeks later when I thought about the fact that I drug the Holy Spirit in there. And yet he followed me and spoke to me. There was a man talking to another man, talking about the pains of life and how his female friend or whatever left him and how he was miserable. And right there, in a place where people told me God would never show up, the Lord grabbed a hold of me and said, listen to them. They need me. They all need me. And look at you. I can't even use you. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've always been willing to talk about it, but only in a way that you thought you could still look cool. No, you will give your life to me. And then he said this. He said, you will present my word for the way it is written. And then I will use you. Now I have to tell you that it's been a quest to try to find out what God even meant that night. And I certainly have not arrived. But I'll tell you one thing. I will work hard and I will continue to work hard until I have no more breath in my lungs. To try to find out what this holy word of God is saying. And what God wants to communicate to his people. Amen. Amen. And by the grace of God, I won't water it down. Hallelujah.